Welcome to the Outbreak of War. Thought we'd have a little bit of music to build this episode up. Finally, episode 17. And we're ready to... Oh, we have indeed started war, haven't we? We're not ready. We, we, we initialize we initialized war. That was the very last thing we did on the last episode. So, you know, all of it's been worth it. Can't wait to get on the go with this one. Um, and I should, of course, say, yeah, 1939 here with the complete tutorial guide for Hearts of Iron 4 here in 2024. Somebody may be thinking, why do you keep saying that at the start of every episode? Surely people by now have figured out that that's what it is. You know, if there are this many episodes in it, they still don't know what the game's about. What on earth are they doing here? The answer is, of course, for anybody that's new here, do check out the description. There is a playlist in there. Um, if you are completely new to the game and you want a complete tutorial, I suggest taking a look at that playlist. And it is also for the benefit of Google, YouTube and their algorithm. I would absolutely require that Google and YouTube understand that this video is a tutorial for a game and not my opinion on the real world 1939. So when I say things such as, oh, it would be really good if we get such and such a guy in and such and such a guy is this historically bad, evil, who whoever he happens to be, uh, I think it's pretty much always a he. Uh, you know, I need Google to understand I'm talking about that in reference to a game, not, oh, I just, this guy just thinks this and, I don't know, let's knock his channel on the head. All right, that's far too much babbling. Let's go ahead and make a start. Here we go then. So let's uh, fade music down. And because I've loaded in, I will stop uh, the music there. Turn my game sounds on and... If you haven't already, slow your time down to the minimum. So that's this green one here. Now, I will say, if you're somebody that is just starting this game from August 1939, um, you know, so you start a new game and rather than selecting January 36, you've gone August 39. You can see I'm only, a, what's that, a, a three or four weeks ahead of you. The problem is you're going to have a different number of units in different places. Now that does not mean, oh well everything then from this point on in the tutorial is pointless, it's not. But you will see that I have different numbers of divisions, different types. Sometimes I may have less, sometimes I may have more, and that's certainly going to be the case when it comes to things like aircraft, uh, the number of panzer divisions, uh, navy and so on. However, the concepts of what we're going to do is exactly the same. Okay, so we've done that. One more thing, just before we hit and pause, we're going to zoom in and then once I've got this little bit out the way, we shall. And I'm just going to pick any uh, division here. Let's go for this guy. If I hover the mouse over the, any of these divisions here, you can see this is all the equipment that is within the division. So not only if we take a look on the left here, can we see, okay, the, the red bar is full. Current fighting strength, therefore, is 100%. In other words, the division has everything it needs, okay? But we can also see, by hovering over this, what equipment they have. And remember when uh, an episode or two ago I was saying, you know, we started production on those new rifles, the MP38? Well, here you can see just that. This division still has 679 of the... Oh, what's that? Carabiner... <laughs> Arabana, whatever it is, the older rifle. Let's just say the old rifle. Let's not embarrass myself too much up front. And the division has 231 of the newer MP38 rifles. So you can see we're in the process of upgrading uh, the equipment within the division. And if we hover over other divisions, we can see uh, there's a similar sort of thing there taking uh, effect. Uh, some divisions clearly more ahead than others. We can also see if we look at, uh, and I think actually the first one is a good opportunity. Yep, there we go. If you look at the very top two, you can see in terms of artillery, and it's not that you need to remember that this is what all of these names are. I'm just making the point. It's got four pieces of the older artillery, the 105 millimeter or the 10.5 centimeter as they call it. 
and it's got eight pieces of the newer support artillery, the 15 centimeter. I'm not sure if that's 150 millimeters. I mean, 15 centimeters is 150 mil, but uh, the you know the standard artillery size, or at least these days when it goes to that size, is 155 mil. Exactly why and why these sizes are very standardized. Uh, and have been for such a long time. I don't know. I'm sure somebody somewhere in the lab figured out a millimeter bigger or smaller is, for whatever reason, not as efficient. I, I couldn't tell you. But in any case, that is what we see there. The second thing I wish to show, if we come over to the stats page here, is I'm going to create a separate episode outside of this tutorial series. And I'm going to go over what all of these stats mean in this window, okay? It, it would just be too much of a long episode where nothing happens if I was to go through these. What I will say is, you know, very basically, um, and, uh, and we can use just common sense, uh, soft attack uh, is against people, hard attack is against tanks. And you can clearly see a division such as this, which is just infantry men and some support artillery with some engineers, is going to be much better versus other soldiers as it is versus uh, enemy tanks. And so we can see that you know the the difference in stats reflected there. Don't forget we added the anti-air uh, battalion in, so they're also good at attacking uh, aircraft. That again, aircraft that are primarily a threat to the divisions such as enemy combat air support. Apparently, it also, if the enemy has air superiority, this stat also helps negate that a little bit. Uh, hopefully, we won't have to rely too much on that. But uh, again, that is a good thing. And then a lot of our hard attack, uh, if you recall, comes from the anti-air. In fact, if I hover over the stats, you can see there that uh, 4.2 of the hard attack comes from our anti-air support. So again, our guys with the anti-air can point the gun literally at a tank. So this division is not entirely helpless if an enemy tank shows up. And again, we'll go over what some of these other things are. In that dedicated episode, which will be live uh, by the time you see this, although I've got to do it later on. Okay, far too much waffling there before we get going. We are 8 o'clock on the 21st of July, and before we unpause, we need to get all of the orders in, okay? If you if you declare war and let any time pass whatsoever without units given orders, that's just uh, an inefficient way to play. Now, you may say, well, shouldn't you have assigned these generals orders before the war? And I don't just mean uh, front line, but I mean... Give them an attack order as well. Yes. In an ideal gameplay that I should have done that. So when we come to attacking the next country, we'll actually give these guys a plan ahead of time. Why would you do that? Let's uh, once again take a look at one of these divisions. I'm just going to hover on the tool stat. Take a look at the very bottom line here. Plan preparation attack bonus. And you can see currently there's a 0% bonus. Why? Because there is no plan. The general has just got the division on the front line holding the line and that's it. There is no, well, hold the line here and then when I give the word, we're going to attack to here. Now, if we do give them a plan, they actually get a little bit of a preparation bonus which enables the division to carry out the attack more... Um, I was going to say more better, but that's terrible. Enables them to attack more effectively. There we go. I knew the word was in there somewhere. Right. Let's uh, come away from that. And again, before we unpause, let's start giving these orders. Now, those of you in episode or two back may recall the whole thing with Danzig. We want to move into that uh, tile straight away. Now that war is declared, we are, we are able to move into Poland. They're able to move into our country. And again, Danzig being, you know what, you know what is these days known as a DMZ or a demilitarized zone, we're going to go ahead and stick our tank in there straight away because, of course, now that war's on, all bets are off in that regard. I'm going to go ahead and get this uh, level two, sorry, level four tank, and I'm just going to, together with the truck, let's get those two in. 
Uh, the truck, because it moves a little bit quicker and is also very good at defending an area. Uh, the tank, just in case Poland have got any ideas. We'll right click and there we go. So that's a manual order. It's worth saying... Um, a question with regards to can a jet can both you and a general give orders to divisions at the same time and the answer is yes and what will happen is when we give orders to the generals all the divisions do what the general says all the time unless we tell the division to do something ourselves so in this case we've told these two divisions hey move to Danzig so you can see there's that little arrow there to show, hey, this is the plan. Now, what will happen is, once those divisions get to Danzig, they've done what we've asked them to do. And at that moment on, whatever the general's got in store for him, he will do second. So let's go ahead and finish up the plans. Then. So I'm going to actually deselect those divisions. I'm going to select the general in full. In this case, it's Rommel. And we're going to start giving some plans so we've with uh, Rommel there selected he's already got the front line we see that there remember that's the Z key to draw a front line and we gave him this little partial front line there in red X to do the front line and the first thing I'm going to try and do is cut off this northern area of Poland so they don't have access to any of the ports and if we can get this airbase as well that'll be great so X to draw front line and the first order of business is going to be like this. Get across there. Okay, let's hit escape and now let's look for our second guy. And I'm just going to move uh, all the way along this row of generals to make sure I don't forget anyone. So next guy here is uh, Bok. Uh, mostly infantry, got one or two motorized, one cavalry. Okay. This guy is holding the line here, Northern Poland. I don't need him to be particularly aggressive, but I would like him to press towards South. So all I'm going to do very lazily with the X key, we'll give him a new front line to extend all the way to where this riverbank is. So right click, drag, having pressed the X key down, and we're going to draw ourselves a front line such as this. Okay. And now we're going to create a second plan or a, a second area that they can sort of queue up the attack for. So press X a second time. And now we're going to draw a, a new front line further down. Uh, so let's make sure we encompass the capital with this. And we'll just have this sweeping sideways motion. There we go. I think once we get that area done, we'll have enough of Poland under us. Um, could also press X a third time, and just in case, there we go. Okay, so that's that one there. Let's hit escape. We'll go through this a little more quick now. Uh, so we've got this guy here. Uh, let's first of all find out, is Lithuania at war with us or not? So with nothing selected, again, press escape to make sure. Right click, and as of now, it seems no. They're just not happy with us. So we don't actually need to give this guy any orders, but we're going to leave him there holding the line. Okay, escape. Right. Double clicking on this guy. A to select him and then B to take my camera to where he is. Okay, remember he's on the northern side here. This is great. So he's going to do exactly the opposite of what the other guys are doing. So X to draw a front line. And there we go. Get it across to cut that northern area of Poland off. Okay, escape. Witzel Bonn, <laughs> Witzel Bonn, whatever he was called, is the northern side of Germany. Now take a look at his divisions here. While all of these are pretty good at soft attack, at least for this stage in the game, and as well as the trucks there, I don't need him, again, to be super aggressive, but I do want him to just try and push across. And to save time now, we're just going to press X. Just going to give him one front line. Let's uh, go for this area here. Okay, deselect. This guy for southern uh, Germany slash Poland. Let's do the same thing. X for a front line and draw to this end. Escape. Now don't forget there is a degree of randomness. So once we get the war underway, we unpause the exact order of battle and how many tiles uh, I advance and you advance is going to vary. You may do better. 
you may not do as well uh, by a matter of hours or days game time don't worry about it okay if you've been following along uh, the upshot at the end of the day is we will do pretty well. And I'll show you a little trick. It's not a trick, but uh, a way that, you know, we can make sure we're all on the same time. Okay, so he's sorted. We've sorted this division here. And who is this here? Okay, so we've got Manstein here, Army 9, Solitary Panzer Division. We didn't yet actually get him uh, stuck in. So let's right-click onto the field marshal myrtle here because this is the field marshal that's currently got this front line here and again because just for me i like to put my panzer divisions towards the left let's uh, left click drag just to move them to the left just to tidy things up we're going to give a single attack move so x and we'll just make a move for warsaw there we go that's it okay escape Let's have a look who else we've got. Right, this guy is covering the line with France. Don't forget, France are now our enemy. Or, or will be in, in within a few hours, if not. I'm going to set this uh, guy, just leave him as is, okay? Uh, we don't want him to push into France. But uh, we certainly don't want France to push into our country. What concerns me a little bit is France has at least one or two panzer divisions here on the line. Uh, we don't really have any anti-tank divisions there, so that's perhaps a little oversight. We'll look at putting that right this episode as well. Escape. Paulus. This was the guy, remember, with those cheapy divisions that were covering the navy ports. Could definitely do with giving him the minimum he needs and again if we take a look at the orders that we've selected him was to cover the entire northern area and we broke that down using guard naval bases only you can see he requires a minimum of eight divisions currently he only has six and that's because he's sat on eight uh basically sat on eight harbors right eight ports that's it he needs one division each uh, so let's hit escape let's see if we've got any in training that we can give him um, they're not trained yet, but I'll tell you what, an untrained division, or at least they're not up to level 3, should we say. But uh, a level 2 division is certainly a better than no division at all. So let's select these two. Let's right-click onto Paulus, and that'll make sure that he covers his front line. All right. Last but not least, then, training army. Let's see if there's any divisions here and any commanders that can make use of them. If you remember, this guy here uh, on the end, the uh, the older guy, is this front line here, Lithuania, which as of right now is not involved in the war. Uh, so what I'm going to do is select some of these divisions that are ready to go. And again, let's give him an even number. So I've got eight divisions there. He's already got eight, so I'm going to right click those. And that's going to get more divisions into the general area uh, ready uh, without upsetting any of the existing war plans. Okay, that's the army or the ground side of things done. Uh, let's take a look at national focus wise. And I think, uh, let's just see how are we doing with Hungary. Remember, we wanted to get them on side and combine the industrial uh, efforts. Uh, it's still in the red, so we're not there yeah i'll tell you what then we'll go for the synthetic rubber okay okay boom right next we've got uh this aircraft here the question mark and all this means is you are at war and somewhere you've got a squadron of aircraft not doing anything and the only exception to this is transport aircraft so every other aircraft type that you've got sat doing nothing this is basically telling you get it stuck in. So the easiest way is just to click it once at a time and we'll see who, what, where. So these are these were the two that we tried to have assisting Rommel and I'll tell you what, we'll uh, continue with that. So with the two fight, uh, sorry, the one fighter wing, the one close air support, we're going to select uh, those two missions. Now we're not giving both types of missions to both aircraft. Remember, fighter cannot go close air support. Uh, close air support aircraft cannot be a fighter. 
Uh, you need the DLC to design multi-role aircraft, and which is never really the best anyway, because they're the jack of all. You may as well have dedicated like this. But in any case, because both are selected, as you can see here now, this wing is being a fighter. This one here is going a uh, close air support, uh, basically. It's going to allow the commander to call him in and say, we've got a tank here behind the farm, take it out, or whatever uh, analogy uh, you like to use. So with those selected once again, we're now going to right-click. See these little uh, aircraft tabs above the, the generals there? You only see those tabs if you're on the F3 mode or the air mode over here. And it just allows us to assign air wings to these generals. That way, we don't have to keep telling the aircraft where to go. The generals will do, you know, whatever they think is best. Which most of the time is best once in a while. Uh, they don't always do it perfectly, but it's a lot better than not at all. So let's get them stuck in. Right click onto Rommel, you can see. Now Rommel's got uh, these aircraft there. Each general can have, it, it would appear, three aircraft types, which in the base game, such as what we've got, is not a problem. Escape. Right, let's carry on then. I'm going to do this a bit more quickly. Uh, we've got this guy here. He's Torpedo, so let's set him. There were two, well, there are actually three missions. He can also go for a port strike. But the two that really matter are either to go after ships in terms of attack them, or this one here, Naval Patrol, to go out looking for boats. Now, they're, they're, they're two different things in this game. Um, I'm going to mix up the roles because don't forget, if he finds enemy ships, uh, our Navy that's set on Strike Force, if they're not already engaged somewhere, will come out and engage. Um, so I think this half and half method is okay, especially considering we're somewhat short on torpedo bombers. So let's right click onto the Eastern North Sea. And so there we can see that fighter wing has now got the, the mission. Uh, to do that. Now, because we've only got 100 aircraft here and we've assigned them a naval patrol, uh, as in look for aircraft, uh, enemy ships as well as naval strike, those are two separate missions. It will not do them as effectively as if, for example, we only set it to look for navy. So if you give the fighter wing more than one role, which is what we've done because we're short on... Um, aircraft or, or you know whether it's a fighter bomber or torpedo bomber regular bomber the more missions you assign the wing and some can only do one type of mission at a time but again the the more missions you assign them at the same time the less good at doing them they will be you know it will spread it out that stand, stands to reason okay so let's hit escape there uh next one here we've got a a fighter Gonna set this guy, you see he's in northwest Germany. I'm gonna set him to gain air superiority over northwestern Germany. There we go. Now hopefully this will dissuade the enemy from bombing us, and if they do, hopefully we'll start shooting them down. Next, we've got a fighter wing there in northern Germany as well. So same there, air superiority. And I'm just going to right click right next to the airbase. Now you may say or well, can you send them to fly into a neighboring? You see these air tiles, so there's an air tile, there's an air tile, there's an air tile, you know, so on and so forth. Yes, clearly you can do that, but they fight best in their own air tile. They sort of get a little bonus by being asked to do a, 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 a task, whatever that is in this case. It's... Uh, air superiority within near their own airbase, right? That stands to reason. You've got to fly 500 or 1,000 miles before you even get to where your mission begins. You're going to be somewhat tired before you even get there. So that's that. Okay, next. Uh, we've got several aircraft up here, so let's get the Navy guy. Let's get him on Navy strike as well as patrol. And we'll right-click into the sea. Can you right-click over land? Yes, you can. Uh, somebody left a comment saying they'd accidentally given such an order. Uh, the squadron will fly all day, all night, and never find anything. So, you know, put them out over the sea. Um, I used to play this game where I would actually send a fighter wing out to escort these guys over the sea. Um, unless our 
aircraft are getting shot down and we'll be able to see that uh i actually find this is a waste of a of a wing so let's set the two remaining aircraft there into air superiority mode i'm actually going to give these to another general let's go ahead give them to heinz Guderi in there and hit escape okay I said I was going to pick up the speed, let's do just that. All of these aircraft on the front line with Poland are going to be air superiority or close air support. Okay, let's go through them then. So top one, fighter, Bok. Second one, fighter, right click, this guy. Third one, fighter, right click, Manstein. Just making sure as many of my generals has got a fighter who were involved in the war as possible. Last but not least, this guy. Next slot, we've got these uh, tactical bombers. And again, the generals that don't yet have one, I'm just going to work along. So this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy. Left click, right click, left click, right click, left click, right click, left click, right click. Okay, not looking too bad. Escape. Low manpower notification, uh, we've been over that before. I'm actually going to right click to dismiss that just to tidy up my screen a bit. Let's carry on. Aircraft here. Okay. Air superiority, close air support. We've been over that. Escape. Oh, I didn't need to press escape there, but uh, regardless, let's go ahead and assign. So it looks like all the generals have basically got somebody. Uh, this guy over here who's holding the line with France doesn't yet. Uh, so let's give him... A, an air superiority squadron he he will when we unpause actually fly then that aircraft uh wing somewhere closer to his base okay so the generals who have got them let's uh, give them some extra so rommel this guy bok this guy this guy close air support uh so let's give him let's give him uh, I'm going to make sure the guy holding the line with France has a squadron. There we go. So if those tanks feel like uh, testing us, at least we'll have something to hit back with. And then this one here. And I actually, again, because I am not enough, I don't have enough to give every general 200. I'm actually going to go ahead and give the general that is attacking. So in other words, the Panzer guy, the extra aircrafts. There we go. All right, escape, because that one's done. Let's have a look who have we got here. A squadron over in Western Germany. Air superiority, just going to cover that area there. And look at that. All the icons have disappeared. That means everyone has got an order. Okay. Just before we unpause then, F2 menu for the Navy. And let's set things up over here. If you recall, the last or one of the last things we did was set up a an area that we wish... Uh, Dernitz here to, I was going to say patrol, but that's the wrong word. We want him to go convoy raiding, so we're going to set that up now. So there we go. Now you may say, well, hang on a minute. Surely you should be able to cover this area effectively. Why are all these areas red? And the answer is because he's not got there yet. Yeah, we've given him the order. So he's basically on the ports here. And you can already see the orders are set sail from ports. So he's relatively happy here but of course it's going to take a few days for the subs to spread out okay let's uh, escape there to deselect him let's come over to the surface fleet remember we had these two flotillas or the two bigger ones with the capital ships on strike force quick recap they will hide in their navy base until they are needed to come out and intercept something this is the best way to play because capital ships use a lot of fuel. Okay, next one. We see this small fleet here that we'd created. This one here. It's actually named itself the Reich Reserve Fleet Number 2. You know, for the, for the sake of, <laughs> you know, let, let's just give it a more descriptive name. Let's call it uh, the... Destroyer Patrol. Destroyer Patrols. There we go. Enter. All right. And that's exactly, if you recall, what we intended for these guys to do. So we're going to go ahead, set the patrol up. And that's because Escape, this guy, was given the order to cover these tiles. And again, 
to get it like this if you if you haven't already right click on all of these regions and you you should see them flashing like this if you've accidentally selected on a region like this where you don't intend shift and right click to you know rid of that but at some point we will be expanding up there just not yet so let's take it slow okay let's escape i think everything's in order we'll have a little look at our insufficient resources issue chromium we're only short by one i'm not going to worry about that okay f1 because it's now time let's press the button to activate our plans rommel go bok go this guy is holding the line with lithuania so doesn't have anywhere to go to so we'll leave that this guy go 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 and go okay escape we'll zoom in and here we go war begins unpaused minimum speed and there you can see the order to advance and the first few bubbles here majority of which are green which is good which means at least initially the action is going our way there we can see over danzig we've been able to capture that by rushing those panzer and truck divisions out there and i think at this moment in time we will with everything looking more green than not across the boards we'll look at increasing the rate of pace we'll take a look at micro at some point in a future episode but this has been a great start and here we go poland has called france as our enemy the uk south africa new zealand australia canada the british raj british malaya malaya also joining the war with them so basically we're, we're we're pretty much up against 10 countries at this stage okay take a look at this things going very well in the early stages even on this slowest of speeds uh, we've made progress in various regions now we've got an, a request here from italy to join i'm not going to decline but nor am i going to accept i'm just going to let it expire you can see it's going to expire on the 21st of august poland joined the uk so i there we go i i thought that was that had already taken place but apparently not <laughs> seems like the entire british empire got involved with the exception of britain for a day or so okay just before we ramp up take a look at this uh doctrines available navy doctrine so let's go ahead make use of that and again we're going down the submarine side they're calling this one unrestricted submarine warfare and again yours may be a day or two either way once you get that uh, notification up there just get the sub thing unlocked what does unrestricted warfare submarine warfare mean in real life well there is a definition and i believe it's something to the effect of it allowed a submarine to fire onto an enemy vessel without giving it warning and there's a whole oh well is that fair or isn't it because if you're just a merchant ship you're cruising along and all of a sudden a torpedo uh, hits your boat and blows up you know obviously you've got chance of being injured even killed in that um if you're thousands well it's it's unlikely you're going to be thousands of miles away from help but you could certainly be hundreds of miles away from help certainly if you're in the mid-atlantic uh you know from the dearest friendly ship let's say that's able to come rescue you so of course there's a chance that you could be killed um so until then they had a rule it was it was i believe it was called prize warfare where what would happen is a a a german sub or or a submarine belonging to any nation they would identify an enemy ship uh, a convoy as in a non-military right we're just talking about ships that are moving oil around or supplies in some way they would identify them they would surface and they would basically signal the boat hey you get your crew onto a lifeboat you, you you've got half an hour and at that time we're going to open fire basically so it would give everybody a chance to get off um what happened was at some point somebody abused that by secretly installing guns onto merchant ships and then when the submarine surfaced to signal them 
the ship opened up on the submarine and at that moment on they decided right so if we give them a chance that places our own guys at risk therefore all bets are off it's unrestricted so no longer does the captain ha of the submarine have to give prior notice to the ship that isn't to say that they didn't shoot first get the ship um damaged and if it wasn't completely taken out if they could see that there was nobody else there and people were abandoning ship most of the time they would surface the boat and actually wait for everybody to get off before finishing it off there are many stories corroborated by people on both sides of the same incident where you had u-boat captains once that was done they would sail up they would go around check that nobody needed any urgent first care first aid care of course if you were near the, the the blast i mean chances are you didn't make it but obviously there were there are many people that have the option to be heavily burnt or whatever uh, they you know and they would dispense medical uh, supplies and so on and again although this was hush hush at the time because of course everybody on the enemy side had to be painted as bad post-war when you look at uh, write-up incidents where both sides were able to weigh in you know they agree that's what happens and you know which is a good thing right even in war there's a bit of humanity in any case that's a very long way of uh, explaining what unrestricted warfare is but as far as the game goes it uh, gives the following stats surface detection uh, plus 10 percent submarine attack plus 10 makes sense right what we're doing is more sneaky basically okay escape We've got three military factories available. Uh, in this case, I've got two. Don't forget, as we now advance through Poland, we're going to pick up some of their factories as well to be able to use. We don't get all of them. We'll take a look at that for a future episode. So if we come over to logistics, let's, let's see where we can best make use of these. And I think it's maybe time to start producing some anti-tank weapons of our own. So three military factories. Let's come over to build and toad anti-tank. Once again, that's at the bottom of the list behind me. Let's uh, click on the top and drag it to the top of the list, or at least next to the other weapons. Let's put it uh, underneath uh, artillery and anti-air, so they're nicely in order. We'll just have the one factory doing it, but it's doing it. I'm now going to look at increasing production on some of these lines, such as the MP38. Again, we've got lots of old equipment in the field. We, uh, I want to try and upgrade some of that. So let's go ahead and push that up by a couple of factories. We've got three pieces of rubber spare, so let's look at uh, making use of those. I think I'm going to up my truck production here to five. And we'll use this button here to tidy up that menu. That uses two of the three pieces of rubber. Uh, we'll use the next piece by increasing the number of close air support from two factories to three. There we go. Let's hit escape. I'm just going to check. Here we can see Romania wants to get involved again. We're just going to hold off on that request. The reason is we want all of Poland for ourselves. Okay. I don't want to have to split Poland with any of these uh, other nations. Uh, so let's unpause. Uh, the front line with nobody assigned. Let's click to see where that is. Okay, that's this arrow directly to the south uh, from Bok. Bok, who's already got his initial orders up there, so I'm happy with that. Okay, let's hit escape. Just make sure nobody's selected. How are we doing here? On pause. I'll just turn the game sounds down a little bit. Get very loud when you zoom in. So... This may be a golden opportunity to increase the aggression. And so let's select Rommel. You can see he's currently not very happy with the situation. I'm sure that's just a temporary thing. Uh, you can see skill-wise he's pretty good there. I'm going to select execute in a balanced manner and go aggressive. And I'm going to do that for Heinz Guderian as well who's got panzers elsewhere. Let's tell him to go aggressive. Okay. See, we've got a few glowing crosses there. Uh, let's just check that none of these will be helpful. All right, Manstein. We've got a choice between, let's say, once again, uh, ignore that one. 
We've got Fortress Buster or Scavenger. And again, the bonuses are this one's better able to attack fortresses. This one's going to pick up more equipment that the enemy leaves behind. It's an either or situation. Um, uh, I'll tell you what, let's go for Scavenger. I usually go for Fortress Buster, but let's, you know, for me, mix things up. Let's go for Scavenger. You can see we're going to capture an, an, an additional 3%. Uh, enemy equipment as we go and again we can use that uh, to augment our own equipment so let's get that in okay we've got more than enough command power that's him sorted Heinz Guderian let's have a quick look here he's only the gorilla so I'm not interested now you see that blue flashes that blue cross stops flashing just like a text message we've read once he gets a new trait it'll flash again or if we load the game up again tomorrow after saving it, it will also flash again as well. Taking a look at Rommel here, also just the Gorilla Fighter, so that's fine. Uh, we're on to the 26th of July now and take a look at this. We've captured the northern uh, ports that we were wanting to do. I'm now going to increase the speed just one. I'm just going to hit escape to make sure I've got nobody there selected. And you can see if ever any of these generals stop with their orders. You see you've got that, you've got this uh, arrow here, this with the green tick. You've got an animated arrow. Sometimes their orders come to a conclusion. Um, so, for example, we try to push east and west. Uh, so some of these generals may not have a clearly defined goal. So let's pause here. On the 29th of July, see we've got this little red very very short front there and you can only really see it if you excuse me if you zoom right in because it's somewhat obscured by these other templates uh, so if we select that find out who that is oh that happens to be rommel so rommel doesn't really have a, an order now i mean he's got a front line to hold that's kind of it so what i'm going to do with rommel selected use the x key and i'll tell you what we'll make a beeline for warsaw so x just make a single uh, command like that. You can see as soon as we've done that command, Rommel's orders uh, no longer continue because he's basically waiting for us to give the word. So let's just tell him to carry right on. Uh, Heinz Guderian, you can see he as well. His Both of these guys, if you recall, were to uh, basically pincer up there. That's done. So I'm going to give him a similar order with the X. I actually go further than Warsaw. Uh, let's make a move here for... Let's go for Cowl. So X, just a small right-click drag. There we go. Let's hit Escape. Give him the order to activate. Unpause. Once again, free military factories. Let's see if we can make use of these without the need for pause. So we've used up all our rubber. So there's... I have paused it now. So there's nothing to be gained by building more stuff with rubber um so quick look on the logistics how are we doing there you can see uh because of war and the attrition and all the rest of it we're currently losing more of these pieces of equipment that we're gaining of course once the battle's over uh, we should see all of this in the green but you can see if this war was to continue indefinitely at some point we're going to run out of infantry equipment trucks as well as support equipment so let's go ahead and increase once to get infantry because you know i'm trying to as well as make sure i don't run out i'm also trying to equip the army with newer stuff any of these icons here remember where you've got that plus means we're currently losing more than we are gaining we've been over that not that we've run out but we're losing more than we're gaining uh, if we have run out uh, there isn't currently an icon, but you've seen it before. It's that red, uh, a red number. So let's up this. Let's go to 25, just so we're not bothered. Uh, we'll increase support equipment to, let's say, seven factories. Uh, Artillery is okay for now. Let's increase towed anti-air by one, uh, towed anti-tank by one, and we'll up Panzers to 15. I'm going to click on that because remember, each one of these squares represents five factories. There we go. Let's hit escape on pause and i'm almost sure that we'll be able to wrap poland up before this episode's out 
So things are going very well. Hopefully your game doesn't look too dissimilar to mine. And things are uh, collapsing there for Poland quite nicely. And you can see how the Panzer divisions are the divisions that really break through the line. The infantry divisions are the ones that hold the line and if you luckily very slowly advance as well. It's really the job of the Panzers to, to cut through and in a future episode we'll look at running rings around the enemy or, or encircling them as, as the military would call it uh, to you know, further enhance our abilities. This is a, a very good way for a beginner to play what we're doing here. So, you know, if, you're, if yours is going like this, you're doing swimmingly. In the more advanced play, you don't try to just attack the entire enemy in this ever-advancing wall. You, you, you try to sort of find a hole, cut through, and encircle enemy divisions to basically knock them out of the game, which is almost like uh, defeating them, quote, for free. In any case, this is going well. Looks like the... The Polish capital is not a million miles away from the front line now. Take a look over here. We've got another doctrine available. Uh, so we've got it again. We've got this arrow. So it's either or. It's either a choice between formation fighting, which gives us the following bonuses. Air superiority is a huge one. Or fighter ace initiative, which increases the chances that, you know, the number of fight, uh, the number of aces we get. Aces, remember, improve just that one squadron, uh, whereas the formation fighting improves every squadron. So I'm actually going to go for this option here on the left-hand side. That isn't necessary to say it's the best. It's just I find giving a bonus all round, it works better for me. Obviously, if you get lots of fighter aces, you'll be able to fine-tune that. Uh, okay, escape. We're on level two. So actually this war's go the, the, this attack through Poland's actually going really, really well. Probably because I'm playing on civilian modes. It, it's kind of surprised me. We've gone through it like a hot knife through butter. There goes Warsaw. Okay. So we're only on the 11th of August. Okay, let's pause it there. Let's pause it there. Hopefully you've been able to pause before your game's finished, as in before your uh, war here's finished. But if not, let us show you, let me show you something. So again, make sure nothing is selected. Escape if ever you're unsure. And we've got this icon here, again, that we've not really seen before. We are at war. It says just that. So we're going to select this, and this is going to allow us to see a, a, an overall uh, global view of the situation, if you like. So the first thing I do is get rid of the capitulated because we don't need to see countries that are capitulated clogging up the screen the screen's already full now just for now i'm also going to get rid of so-called minor countries so this is a, a a little overview of the situation in totality major players right so germany and italy on one side france and the uk on the other side clearly there are there are other smaller countries involved as well now, it may be that you get a third side on this, or even a fourth, just depends how many alliances there are. Uh, so, for example, if before Japan aligns with Germany, Japan may align with, you know, other countries in the Far East, and maybe they call it the, the, the Far Eastern uh, sphere. I can't remember exactly what they call the alliance, but the... But the point I'm trying to make is you'll end up with three boxes on this screen instead of two because there's basically three sides, uh, you know, at war as opposed to just two. Okay, so let's turn the miners back on. And if we take a look here, Poland, look at this graph. Okay, it's mostly red. This is how far they are towards capitulation, which basically means how long until they're dead. You do not need to, to conquer or capture every square inch of the enemy nation uh, to win. You need to fulfill this graph here. So from Poland's point of view, this graph needs to be red and then we win. And you can see it's 88% towards that point. The quickest way to fill this graph is to conquer cities, cities and towns where all the people are, okay? If you, if you conquer a field in the middle of nowhere, 
uh, that percentage point will move, if at all, very marginally. If, however, you take out the capital, which we already have, that will have been a huge progress towards uh, capitulation. You may say, well, hang on a minute, if you've taken off the capital, which was Warsaw, and the capital is a star, why has Poland now got another capital? And the answer is because we've taken the capital, they now have to assign themselves a new capital, and that's what they've done. Raid on. Remember, the capital is where the supplies are, um, so trying to go for these areas are good because we knock out their supply areas as well as, of course, those victory points. I'm imagining that once we take oh, a couple more cities off them, uh, that that graph may indeed be full. I'll tell you what, let's have a little look. Let's see if we can keep it on the screen there. I'll zoom out a little bit. The battle is going so swimmingly, it doesn't require any intervention. I'm happy with how things are going there. So let's unpause. 12th of August. And if I hover the mouse over here, you can see it's 93%. Let's pick up the pace to level 3. can see there's a few battles that uh, were red, at least on my game up there, but the majority, again, is still green. So green being good. 97%. You can see the capitals moved once again now over to the eastern side of Poland. Cowell. Come on. 99% Boom, there we go. All right, so as soon as that menu comes up, hit space to pause because it doesn't auto pause. So take a look at this. We've won, obviously. We get half of their stuff, which includes this many rifles, that many trucks, which is probably the most useful. Another 2,500 two pieces of miscellaneous equipment. That's going to be everything else, right? Artillery types, uh, anti-air, you name it. Everything else is in there. Support equipment, so on. Okay, and of course, there is the news, which is great news from our perspective. We can go ahead and do away with this. And of course, capitulated nations, there you see... The first one is down. So if you take a look, one other stat on this screen before we uh, close it off for today or for this episode. Poland's obviously been capitulated, so they're out. But you can see here, they lost. That's this ca uh, column here, casualties. Almost 200,000 men uh, through this war. Germany uh, lost 58,000 men. So, you know, we, we suffered casualties, but uh, for you know to cover to capture a, a nation as large as poland i'm not sure uh what the real world stats were um okay <laughs> quick pause there. that's the first time i've used that in this series um in the end so this is what really happened germany lost 14,000 men uh killed in conflict and a further 30,000 were wounded um out of one and a quarter million troops involved Polish casualties, 66,000 dead, 130,000 wounded, and another 400,000 were captured out of a total of 800,000 troops. So Germany actually outnumbering Poland 3 to 2 when it comes to, uh, you know, manpower overall. Okay, let's uh, close that one off. That is going to be a great way to end this episode. Now, if you haven't yet captured Poland in its entirety... Uh, obviously your battle will still be going. I encourage you to select uh, divisions such as Rommel and just switch it up over to aggressive and do that as well for Witzelbom. Set him to aggressive. They will then carry out their orders in a more aggressive manner and you will be able to wrap up the Polish conflict pretty quick. Bearing in mind, all of your other divisions are still fighting. And remember, make sure that they are. Clearly, having now completed or conquered Poland, all of our orders, as you see, disappear. Because there is no more German-Poland front line. Because it's all Germany at this point. So, 
Next episode, our mission will be to give these guys new orders and we will do so in a more effective way. We will plan battles and we'll actually make use of the field marshals to plan battles in the next episode. I look forward to bringing you, you that shortly. So make sure to catch that episode when it drops. It's probably there by now uh, if you're seeing this. And until next time, take care. Bye-bye.